Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And it is actually Saturday evening. It's like seven minutes before midnight. And I was waiting to hear from my good Judy because I went to uh, dinner earlier with my husband and some people and then um, they went to go hang out. And so I was like, I'm gonna go hang out with my good Judy and my sponsor. And Tani was watching a movie with her husband and I fear that she may have fallen asleep, but she worked all day today, so she needed it. So I was like, while I'm waiting, I'm gonna sit around here and I'm gonna film some videos for Sunday. Um, and then maybe on Sunday I can like sit outside and read and enjoy the sun and things like that. All little Tucker's right down here, he's needing so much attention. So, um, I am pre-filming some videos, so I hope you uh, enjoy this. I did not film a video on Saturday, I was getting late, we were running to dinner and things like that. Um, but I did do like a longer vlog, so if you watch my vlog, please go enjoy that. All right, I wanted to show you this. <clears throat> I actually showed this on my review video that I just made. But my husband went to Barnes & Noble the other day because he was looking for a gift. And um, he has to like, well, I shouldn't say that because he's, well, by the time this is up, it won't matter. He's going to a baby shower and they have to bring books. And I, I think that's such a cool idea for a baby shower. And so he had like a really good time and he was over there and he was like looking for specific things. And he was like in the meditation second, section, right? And, um... I keep on hitting the books. But anyway, he knows how much I love meditation books. So he was, like, I, I told him one time I wanted something that was, like, more pictures and I could just kind of look through and, like, very, like, just, like, short passages because I really like the Sark book um, that isn't always these long meditations. So Alex brought me these two. The first one is Daily Kindness, 365 Days of Compassion, uh, Photos and Wisdom to Enrich Your Spirit. And they are very, very, like, short, just little passages in here. Do you see? Like, like underneath here and up here. They're not like long meditations, but they're just like thoughts for the day and I love that. So I thought we would start with that, these. And then the other one is Daily Joy. 365 days of inspiration, photos and wisdom to lift your spirits. And I love these, so I thought, Okay, let's start with these today. I only read the one from yesterday when he brought it home. Was it yesterday he brought it home? Yeah, yesterday when he brought it home. I thought it was so nice that he did that because he knows I love meditation books, right? So let's try this. It's August, well, for you, it's August 16th. So I'm gonna read the August 16th one. Um, I did just show my new reading glasses in my meditation, or my meditation, in my review video, but these are my old ones that I just have thrown around everywhere. Okay, let's, I got these off of Amazon, I think two for $9.99 or two for 20 or something like that. And I will say, like, the ones I got are very expensive and they're, but they're extremely durable. Like, these almost, like, break all the time, but they're cute, don't you think? <laughs> I think I looked up cool reading glasses or something like fashion reading glasses for men and these are what came up, in case you wondered. Okay, oh no, let's read the Daily Kindness one first. Okay, Daily Kindness. Because, you know, I always talk about practicing. Look at the pictures in here. are so beautiful. Practicing random acts of kindness. Oh, each month is a different thing. So, like, July is patience, which is, I wasn't giving you the finger, I promise. Which is one of the things that I work on um, practicing. August is encouragement. I love that. Okay. So, August 16th. And the picture is, um, like, I don't know if you can see, but it's like this prairie out here. August 16th. Oh, there, there are quotes in here. One of them that I read, maybe it's the other book. Was, I don't think it was a quote. Maybe it was, I don't know. August 16th. It is not in doing what you like, but in liking what you do that is, wait. It is not in doing what you like, but in liking what you do that is the secret of happiness. J.M. Barry, who, is wrote, who wrote uh, Peter Pan. I know that because, of course, I love Peter Pan, right? Because my name's Peter and all that. Um, I, I love that meditation. Um, I can see it from here. It is not in doing what you like, but in liking what you do. I think that's so true, you know? And it's like, I feel so completely blessed that I have, um, you know, like, uh, I don't even know what you would call it. I don't call it a job. I don't call it a career. I just call it what I do. You know, that I get to make videos every single day. I feel so blessed that I get to do something that I love every single day, you know? But that's not always the case for people. And, you know, when I was younger, my dad said to me, do what you love and the money will follow. Not meaning that you'll get rich off of what you do, right? But if you do what you love, okay, typically, because you'll have such passion and love for what you're doing, that you'll have enough money to put on your table. 
when I was in my younger years, you know, and I was working, you know, in a treatment facility as a social worker, I did not make a lot of money. You know, okay, I don't know if that's a surprise to anybody, but social workers don't make a lot of money. But I was happy. I didn't need a lot of money, right? So do what you love and the money will follow. But then he also, there's a second part to that. It's do what you love and the money will follow. Um, but if the money doesn't follow, at least you love what you do is basically the saying. Is that the saying? Do what you love and the money will follow. The money doesn't follow. At least you love what you do. Yeah, I think that's what he said. Anyway, um... But you know, like it's the, like kind of the idea of the secret of success, you know, that do something that you love. You know, I always ask people like when they're like in between jobs and they're like, I can't find a job. I'm like, what do you want to do? Like, this is a perfect opportunity, you know, like people always see that as like the worst thing that could possibly happen, which it is, you know, when you're like screwed, like how am I going to pay my bills and whatever. But with like friends of mine in recovery, they're like, I don't really know what to do. And like, you know, I've been putting in applications. I'm like, okay, here's a perfect opportunity to ask yourself, what do I want to do? Like, do you want to work in a music store? Do you want to work in a restaurant? restaurant you know like what do you want are you good with people do you not want to be around people like what would be ideal for you and then go and put in applications in places like that you know and um, I said that to a friend of mine actually and he started working at like a music store and he ended up loving it you know he was like oh, I never thought about that like you know I never thought about the fact that I might put an application in a place that wasn't even asking and if they did that need somebody they would call me you know um but those are just like you know like I'm, I'm somebody that like, I learned the hard way to ask for what I needed sometimes, you know? Because I'm not good at that. I don't think most people are good at asking for what you need. Um, but, you know, like, most people, I think, out there, it's like we all have to put food on the table. We have to pay the bills, you know, so to speak. And so a lot of people are just like, I have to take whatever job I can get. You know, like, it's not like... I mean, like, we want to think about it, it that it's about education. It, ne it, not, it isn't necessarily about education, you know? I have friends of mine that have, you know, master's degrees and doctorates and have worked themselves up through the, you know, whatever chain, the whatever field that they're in, and they're miserable. They hate their jobs, right? And I have friends of mine that work in fast food and they love it. And that's true story, okay? They are happier doing that, right? So I don't know that it necessarily has to do with education. I'm not minimizing education. I think everybody should get a minimum uh, education because it's something to fall back on. I mean, you, it is easier to get a job with education and it is easier to get a job that you want to do something in with education than to not, right? You have to work harder to get where you want without an education. I do believe that, right? Um, so, you know, I, I, but I think like the thing is that like, what do you do if you're in a position where you do something that you absolutely can't stand, but you have to go into work every single day, you know, and you have to like have this job to put food on the table, to take care of your kids, whatever. What do you do then? Right? Well, I think that's the art in what he's talking about is, you know, starting to kind of like learn to like what you have to do. Like, you know, it's like if you have to clean the toilet at home, nobody really wants to do that. Right? It's about learning. Is there something I can, can I put music on? Can I, is there any way to enjoy this? You know, if I have to go to this job during the day, can I get myself primed for it? Is there something I can do in the morning? Can I listen to a favorite audiobook or maybe like make a playlist of music that will inspire me before I go to work, you know? Or maybe I can make a list of 20 things that I really do enjoy about my job, you know? What? I've had a lot of friends of mine that um, didn't necessarily love what they were doing, but they loved the people that they worked with. And there were times that, you know, like I didn't love what I was doing, but I loved the people that I worked with, you know? There were times that I didn't love the people that I worked with too, you know? But I think that if you could make a list of 20 or 30 th things that you could like keep in your car, and so every morning when you're like going to work and you're like, God, I don't want to go to work today, you know, you could pull that out and you can look at it and go, okay, well, here are five things to inspire me for the day or motivate me. It might not work, but it might, you know? I think it's a good thing to think about, you know? Learn Learning to like the things that we have to do. And it's not just about a job. It's about all kinds of things. It's about cleaning. It's about, you know, whatever you have to do in your life that you don't want to do. I have to have, go have an MRI on Monday. So listen, I, and I don't want to do it. And I'm not excited about it. So I need to take some of my own advice. Maybe I could sit down and make a list of 10 to 20 things. I mean, you know, number one, just the fact that I need results to find out what's going on my back, whatever. Number two, it probably won't be as bad as I think it is. You know, three, maybe the people will be really, really nice, you know. Four, it'll be a reason to take the day off and just relax and watch TV all day long. I probably won't, but anyway, you know what I mean? Five, you know, like I get to drive all the way out there and listen to my audiobook and all the way back. You know what I mean? There's things I can look at it that way. You know what I mean? Six, I have to buy a new pair of boxer shorts so I can wear it for that. Because <laughs> I want a new nice pair of boxer shorts because you have to wear underwear for the thing. A little too much information, but I'm getting a new pair tomorrow. So anyway, all right, let's read the next one. Daily Joy. Three, well, for you, it'll be today that I'm buying the boxer shorts just in case you spot me at the Target. Okay. Daily Joy, you'll be like, oh, are you looking for boxer shorts? How did you know? 
Daily Joy, 365 Days of Inspiration, Photos, and Wisdom to Lift Your Spirit. Okay, Aug Freedom is August. Look at that. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Okay, August 16th. Oh, wait, I went to way August 27th. We don't want to go that fast. I'm slowing August down a little bit. Okay, um, August 17th. August 16th. <laughs> Just one sentence, you guys. Freedom lies in being bold. Robert Frost, my mom's favorite poet. Poet. My mom's favorite poem, I was going to say. Um, when I was growing up, I had to, uh, my mom made me memorize a poem. She's like, I don't care what poem it is, but you have to memorize one poem. And um, so I memorized, I had a picture book of it. She let me pick out which one I wanted. No, 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 that's not true. I loved this poem anyway, and my mom's friend knew that, and she ended up buying me this one year for Christmas. Um, I think the poem is called Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Um, who was, whose woods these are, I think I know his house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to see his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to see us, uh, to stop without a farmhouse near. He gives his harness bells a shake to see if there is some mistake. The only other sound of sweep is downy winds and down or something. I don't know. I don't remember the whole thing, but it, the end of it is, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Miles to go before I sleep. I used to, my mom and I used to talk about it because my mom's favorite poem, um, was about decision and it was two woods diverged in a yellow um how does it go two roads diverged two woods something in a yellow one and i took the road less traveled by and that has made all the difference that was how my mom lived her life you know bold fearful fearful many times but bold she stood by her principles she stood by her values she stood by what she believed in I love the line in The Contender when she says at the end of it, principles only mean something if you stick by them when they're inconvenient. And um, my mom was a person that that was true of, you know, I think. She was somebody that took the road less traveled. And um, I think many times it wasn't easy for her, you know. All of my friends in high school were so different and so bold, you know. Back then it was like shaved from here to here, you know, this was all shaved and then this hung down and purple, you know, and they were all different and loud and colorful and vibrant sisters that um, protected me against the world. I was very sheltered by my friends. I'm so thankful for it because I had a lot of cruelty directed towards me in those days, but my mom loved my friends, you know? I think they reminded her of parts of herself. And I can remember one time I like did something, like I can't remember what it was. Like one time I, I dyed my hair like really, really, like it was like pitch black. And my mom was like, she can't, I was coming down the stairs and she looked at me and she goes, you're not going to school that way. And my mother, they did not, my parents did not care about stuff like that. I mean, they did not care, okay? They, I, if I had had a mohawk 50 different ways, they would have been like, you do you, you know? They didn't care. My mom, I came down the stairs and my mom goes, you're not going to school that way. And I go, what are you talking about? And she goes, <laughs> like Carrie, you know, they're all gonna laugh at you. She was like, I don't want people to make fun of you. And I just kind of laughed and I walked out like, do you even get it, mom? Like they're already making fun of me, you know? She didn't know, I kept her from that. You know, I sheltered her from that because I didn't want her to feel the pain. And we shelter people that we don't want them to feel the pain, you know? But I can remember talking to my mom one time because she would sit like out on the front porch with my friends and she would like talk to them like what, before I, like while I was getting ready and stuff. And she loved my friends and would ask them about music and all this kind of stuff, you know? She worked with one of my friends at Ayers. I remember they worked together like two, two like uh, at Christmas time. I can remember my mom worked in domestics with towels, and this was when my mom was like in the heaviest of her drinking. And she would come home every night, and she had these. She would get these drinks called martinis for two. She went to the Susie's liquor store one time. I went through my mom's checks. I literally like went through all of them. There was like forty checks in there from the month, and it was like each one was like six dollars and something from Susie's liquor store, and it was like two like martinis for two, and like a six pack of beer and a cart. And a, pack of cigarettes and that was like six something or eight something back then you know so anyway I remember this one time she said something to me it wasn't that time with my hair but it was another time and she said something to me like I don't think you should wear that and I was like mom what is the deal like with my friends like you are like because we would call ourselves individuals and I would say you're so cool with them like you love how they dress or whatever and she's like and I'm not their mother and I'm like what do you mean and she's like 
I am protective of you like a mama bear, okay? I am not their mother. Like, you know, like I can be that person and be cool with them and talk about music and, you know, you know, Janis Joplin and Joan Baez and the Grateful Dead. I can be that with them, right? But like, I'm your mother. I'm protective of you. And I was like, I don't get it. Like, I didn't get it. I didn't understand why she couldn't be that cool mom with me. And she looked at me and she said, and she never did. She, my mother, I, I, like, I was very against, like, you know, parents drinking with their kids and stuff. She goes, I will never drink with you. She said, I will never be, or she didn't say that. Like, she said that later to me. But she said, I will never be the cool, the cool friend parent. So if that's what you're looking for with me, I, I'm not that. She was like, I'm your parent. And trust me, one day you'll thank me that I was your parent. Well, I had to take care of her, so she wasn't necessarily always my parent, you know. But... But I look back on that and I, I am thankful for that. I didn't need another friend, you know? I needed a parent, I, I, I wanted a parent. Like I wanted that deep inside, you know? I wanted that so bad because there were so many moments when I had to take care of her. That's all I wanted. So when my mom got sober, when my mom got sober and I got to have that, I was so thankful, you know? But I think she was so scared of me being different, you know? And then when I kind of like came into my own and like owned that, like in my youth, I was free. Like I was. And I don't know what happened over time. Like I kind of like got into this keeping up with the Joneses and you have to look a certain way. And you know, people won't like look at you the same way if you like, I don't know, have long hair or you know, your hair's dyed blue or whatever. And it's just easier to not fight the fight. I did, I played into that for a while, you know? I don't today. I, I am who I am, right? Like, I mean, I don't have like all wacky and blah, 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 whatever hair because I don't want to. If I did tomorrow, I would. And that's who I am today, you know? I dance to the beat of my own drum. I live by having a bold heart, like the statement said, okay? And I try not to be fearful. And I will tell you, I do care what other people think today. I do. I care what my husband thinks. I care what my family thinks. I care what my best friend thinks. And I care what my other friends think. That's it, okay? And sometimes I do. Like when people, other people like say stuff, I'm like, really? Like you think that about me? You think I'm like old, the old man and I'm fat? You think I have a, a, a pompadour today? <laughs> Isn't it August 16th the day that Elvis died or something? I think maybe that's kind of sad. But I think, you know, like all of us, if I, if I learned anything from my friends in high school and my mom and, you know, people in my life that I've been attracted to. I'm always attracted to those people that live bold. I am. I am attracted to the most colorful, vibrant person in the room that comes in and just owns it. I am attracted to the person that is too much. That is why I always want to be too much because I'm attracted to that person. I'm not necessarily always attracted to what they have on or what their hairstyle is or whatever. I'm attracted to that energy and that level of self-assurance and confidence. I don't know that it's necessarily even confidence, okay? It's kind of a level of I love myself enough to know that I owe it to myself to be myself. And I guess I needed to hear that tonight. This was such a great gift because I really needed to hear that tonight. I need to be too much and live bold going forward and, and, and I'm only going to be here for, you know, so much time. And uh, I think I have, to, I have to do that. I have to live by my heart, you know? Right? I'm a little kissy. <laughs> oh, he's like going like this. Like, Dad, come on. Boo Radley, you want to come up here? He stepped back. He goes, no, I don't. Come here. Come here, honey. Come and say goodbye to everybody. Boo Radley always hits the ring light when I pick him up. So... But he said, Dad, I wanted to come up here and I wanted to say goodbye to everybody. You too, did? You too, Dr. Tucker? You wanted to say goodbye? Okay, say goodbye to everybody. Anyway, we love you guys and we will see you tomorrow. Have a fantastic Sunday and we love you. Bye.